Now, there was a report from Ringside News about Jim Ross that claims AEW plans to transition him out of the announce booth on a full-time basis in the near future. He would still call big matches and and some major shows. He would do sit-down interviews with talent. They claim that a source also told them that this is JR's call and that the change would not be immediate, but that it is coming. Now that report, because I know some people are going to hear, oh, ringside news, and now we're hearing that this report is being backed up by Cassidy Haynes of Bodyslam.net, who says that he has heard the same thing from a source in AEW. For his part, uh, when SE Scoops tweeted at Jim Ross asking if the report is true, he responded by saying that it's news to me. But we now have two different sites that are reporting this. And I will just say this. Jim Ross, and I've said this before, you know, when I've crit- you know criticized JR, when he's had his botches on AEW television, you know, WWE Dynamite, Kenny Omega, the WWE champion, or botching someone's name, or, you know, whatever. I mean, he's had some rough moments on TV. But I've always said that Jim Ross is the greatest wrestling announcer that ever lived. And I say that as a fan of Gorilla Monsoon's work growing up as a WWF fan. Even Vince McMahon on commentary. I was I was a Vince McMahon fan of his work on commentary. Uh, a lot of people who grew up watching the NWA uh, or early WCW might say Gordon Soley. Jim Ross himself would say Gordon Soley. But in my opinion, Jim Ross is the greatest wrestling announcer of all time. There are far too many iconic calls to name that he has lent his voice to over the past 30 plus years. But the man has lost some speed off of his fastball. I think we can all acknowledge that. He is going to be 70 years old next year. I think the best role for him would be to announce big matches on major shows and to do sit-down interviews. If we don't get to hear Jim Ross every week, when they trot him out there to be the third man in the booth for a big pay-per-view match, big championship match. I think, you know, as we see less of him and they do bring him out for those big matches, it will help make those matches feel and sound more special. Not unlike what WWE was doing with him when they would bring him in for these one-shot deals at WrestleMania. They did that with the Undertaker Shawn Michaels match at WrestleMania 25. You know, they would bring him out there from time to time for the big matches and it, it, enhances them it makes them feel more special and i think that would be a great role for him to be in i think i think he can still bring a lot to the table but the week-to-week shows would be fine in the hands of excalibur tony Schiavone, and if they must have a third person then put taz in there you know i also watched the interview that chris van vliet did with paul white which is great by the way i recommend it it's about 30 minutes long uh he always comes across great Paul White does in these interviews. And he said that had the timing worked out differently when he signed with AEW, he would have pushed for the commentary spot on Rampage instead of Elevation. But the YouTube show was the only spot open when he signed with the company. Uh, They put Mark Henry on Rampage instead. I would flip them. Now, I don't think Mark Henry... You know, I've had people tell me, oh my God, he's terrible. We've only heard Mark Henry very little so far on Rampage. What little I've heard of him, I don't think he's terrible. He's just very inexperienced. But what I would do, I would flip them. I would put him on the YouTube show. I would put him on Elevation and put Big Show on TNT for Rampage on Friday nights. That's my two cents on that. Gangrel on his Fangin' and Bangin' podcast. I was today years old when I learned that Gangrel had a podcast. But I, I at this point, I just assume that every former wrestler has a podcast. <laughs> we just don't we don't hear about all of them because they don't all get uh, hosted by Conrad. But apparently, yes, Gangrel has his own podcast, and he shared a story this week that he was supposed to be on AEW Dynamite last week in Milwaukee, but it was canceled. And the reason that his appearance was canceled was because Edge went on SmackDown and then at SummerSlam and paid homage to The Brood. And he says, so what happened here is that AEW reached out to him and wanted him to make an appearance on Dynamite. 
Didn't explain exactly what he would be doing, but apparently they were already working on putting his entrance together with music and pyro with fire. And he was going to be flying out to Milwaukee. The day before, he got a call from the company saying that they were going in a different direction. On SmackDown, the go-home show to SummerSlam, if you remember, Edge gave Seth Rollins what they called a brood bath. Not a blood bath, because that's not PG. So instead of a blood bath, it was a brood bath. It looked like they dropped crude oil on top of Seth Rollins. It was all black. Black goo. And Gangrel saw that, and he started to get a little bit worried. <laughs> because he knew that AEW was bringing him in for this appearance the following week. And all of a sudden, they're talking about the brood, and he's dropping, you know, liquid on top of Seth Rollins. But he thought, all right, it should be fine, right? Then comes Saturday, and Edge does the whole brood entrance at SummerSlam, which was awesome. It was a great entrance. Big stadium, right? They played the brood music. They had the ring of fire in the entranceway, and Edge rises up, just like he did all those years ago. It was a great entrance. When he saw that, as excited as he was for Edge, and he thought it was really badass, he knew right away. He said, that's it. <laughs> that's going to be the final nail in the coffin. And sure enough, AEW ended up dropping the whole thing because they, they didn't want to be seen as copying what WWE did. Now, what he would have done, I have no idea. He didn't get into it. Maybe he wasn't told. Maybe they just said to him, look, we want you. We'll fly you in. When you get here, we'll tell you what you're going to be doing. No questions asked. I would have said yes, too. Hey, you're going to pay me to fly in and do something with me on TV? Shit. Sign me up. My, my guess is it would have had to have had something to do with Christian because he's got the history with Christian. Christian did come out on TV last week. They were showing footage of him wrestling on the independent scene in Canada. That was part of this whole story with Don Callis and everything heading into his championship match with Kenny Omega. So I'm almost positive it would have had to just be something involving Christian. And maybe it would have been Christian and Gangrel and not Christian and Frankie Kazarian wrestling on Friday night against Kenny Omega and Brandon Cutler. Because remember, they taped Rampage in Milwaukee that same night. So if they brought Gangrel into Milwaukee, they could have had him as you know for an entrance. They could have put him in a match. I think his role went to Frankie Kazarian is what I thought. But who knows? But Gangrel called Edge. He wanted to call him and catch up with him. I guess they still talk from time to time, which is cool. And he wanted to tell him how, how badass he thought it was to pay tribute like that to the brood on SmackDown. And, and Edge wanted to know what he thought of the entrance at SummerSlam. He was all over the moon about it. He's like, he was really excited thinking, man, this might actually, this might get you more bookings too. So he thought it would help Gangrel. And then Gangrel broke the news to him and said, well, it might have actually had the opposite effect. And he said there was like a pause on the phone and he could tell that Edge was really upset about what had happened. He said, dude, I had no idea. He goes, I've been working on trying to get this done for almost three months. Trying to get WWE to approve it. Even, even the bloodbath stuff. He said WWE was very adamant that if it's blood, red blood, we're not going to do it. So the black stuff was the compromise. So, you know, he's, Gangrel was really cool about it. He doesn't have, you know, any ill will towards Edge or anything like that. Uh, but, I mean, you talk about timing. What are the chances? When was the last time we saw The Brood? Had to be 99, right? So that's over 20 years ago. <laughs> Gangrel is about to come in for an appearance, and it just so happens that Edge is doing this big elaborate Brood entrance in front of 50,000 people at SummerSlam. That sounds like a hell of a coincidence. But if Edge is telling the truth, he's been working on this for a while. This wasn't, you know, some spur of the moment type of thing. Which I can believe, because I think at a company like WWE, you know, these things, you would have to push it through. It would probably take a few months to push something like that through. And get it approved. But you know what, I will say this, if, if Gangrel had showed up on Dynamite, I don't think it would have been the same without that brood music. That brood music is awesome. I don't know if it would have been quite the same without the original Jim Johnson music. But we'll say Gangrel, he got paid. 
I believe he said he got paid even though he did not get flown in, which was very cool that if that is the case for Tony Khan to do that. He got paid anyway for the appearance, and maybe they'll use him in the future. They, he's made one appearance for them before. He made a cameo in one of those final deletion-type matches that Matt Hardy did many months ago. Uh, Might have been last year. So it's not like he hasn't done stuff for AEW in the past. But boy, you talk about poor timing. Doesn't get any worse than that. 